With the release of iOS 16 this week, Apple introduced a totally redesigned Apple Home app to try and bring it up to scratch with the modern standards that we expect from our smart home apps. In this video, I'll be talking about five of the most important new features of this home app which I think you really need to know to get the most out of your smart home experience. And make sure you stick around until the end of the video because there's one massive downside to this app which I think you ought to know as well. My name is Steven and welcome to Hey Techie. Here on the channel we're interested in everything to do with building an Apple smart home, from product reviews to tutorial videos and everything else in between. If that sounds like the kind of thing that you are interested in, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future videos. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So this is the new Apple Home app. The first thing I want to talk about today is the new display interface and it's going to be the first thing that you notice when you open up the new home app for the first time and it is indeed noticeably different from before. Along the top you'll now be greeted with a new set of categories including lights, security, water and climate etc which obviously depends as to which smart home devices you have in your home. When you press on these, it then narrows down the display to show you all of the HomeKit devices in that category in your home, making it an awful lot quicker to find the device that it is that you want to access at that time. This is also really handy for being able to see all of the data across my smart home. For example, if you have multiple thermometers that are linked in with HomeKit, you'll be able to see the temperature in all of the rooms in your home in one display. As we head into the winter, I think this will be a really useful one to keep an eye on for those of you who have thermostatic valves on their radiators. Pressing off of that and then scrolling down, you'll then also be able to see the rest of the main interface, which includes our second point, which is this, the three part tiles. Now so far these tiles have divided opinion of the smart home community, and I think that the critique of this feature is legitimate if I'm completely honest with you. I don't think this is as innovative as Apple is traditionally renowned for being. These new tiles look like they just present you with one single interface, but actually there are three parts to it. To control the device and turn it on and off, you need to tap on the icon on the left. If you want to go into the settings of that device, tap the text on the right. And for further additional settings, you can long press on the right hand side of the tile. Another element where users have so far found it confusing is why some tiles are now larger than others when you open the app for the first time. Now there is indeed a way to adjust this. If you go to the settings icon in the top right of the app, go to edit home view, tap on the tile in question, a little icon will appear in the top right of the tile which will then allow you to adjust the size of the tile between large and small. Alternatively, a quick way to access this is to long press on the tile and then go to edit home view that way instead. Unfortunately though, you can't change this for scenes, which is really annoying because these are the things that I would personally want to prioritise in my Apple Home app experience. Number three is the redesign of room settings. Now, one of my critiques of the old home app was the difficulty in setting up multiple rooms within the app and then getting them into the right order, and you'd have to continually swipe through all of the rooms in your home to get to the room that you want to look at. But with the new app, there is now the option to reorder sections, which means that you can reshuffle those individual elements of your smart home within the app to suit your needs as your smart home grows and develops. This also means that Apple has removed the side swiping to scroll through rooms and if you need to get to a specific room quickly, the quickest way to do so is going to the settings icon again in the top right of the app where you can have a list of rooms presented in front of you. Number four is the home app as now available as part of lock screen widgets. Now it's no surprise that one of iOS 16's keynote features was the redesigned lock screen experience on iPhone. The addition of widgets on the lock screen is long overdue, there's no doubt about it, but having smart home control here is a fantastic addition to this. There's a variety of widgets which you can use, including a summary, climate sensors, security alarms, lights and more, and obviously what you will have access to here will depend on what you've got in your smart home. 
if you choose summary, tapping on it will automatically bring you directly to the home app once you've used Face ID to unlock it. And finally then number five is an awesome array of new customization options. If you go into the settings of each device, you will now find a huge array of new icons for your devices and scenes. As well as this, Apple has added a new array of wallpapers which you can use, which can customize your personal experience. You can also use your own photos for this, which you could previously use before. In the grand scheme of things, these personalization options aren't really a big change, but it is one that I'm sure that will make each user feel like they have a lot more control over the personalization of their HomeKit experience. And the bonus one is the sixth point, which I mentioned earlier, which is the downsides to this app. Rounding off this video, I think it's worth noting that there are a few things that Apple has not changed in the home experience. Rounding off this video, I think it's also worth mentioning that there are a few things that Apple has not changed in the home app. Disappointingly, automations are almost completely unchanged, which means that the Apple home app remains light years behind where it should be, and the Apple home app will not become a one-stop shop for all of your smart home needs. You're still going to need to use this app in conjunction with others like the Ease app, which will allow you to have far greater control over your custom home automations. So thank you so much for watching. These are the main new features from the Apple Home app. Please make sure to do a backup before updating to iOS 16 and let me know what you make of the new app in the comments below. If you've already updated, what's your new favorite feature? For me, I think it's easily got to be the new design. I think it looks great, but I'm still not sold on these three-part tiles. Until next time then, I've been Steven for Hey Techie.